Finally tonight, Continental Airlines' big turnaround. Tom Bearden reports. It's fun for Continental Airlines CEO Gordon Bethune to make the rounds at Houston's George Bush Intercontinental Airport, which is something he does on a regular basis. How are you? This is my first day of being a supervisor out right here. Are you? Yeah? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just employees who clamor to shake his hand. So do customers. I have truly seen this airline turn around. People's enthusiasm and pride in what they work for, and I well, really believe you're the cause. And I just well, it's a good team effort, but thanks for sticking with us. It's a radical turnaround for a company whose employees not long ago were ashamed to admit they worked there. Back in the 1980s, Frank Lorenzo ran Continental. He'd taken over what had been known as a Tiffany airline with one of the best service reputations in the industry, but was teetering on the brink of financial ruin. Continental had high labor costs and couldn't compete with the very low-cost discount airlines that sprang up after the industry was deregulated and ticket prices could be changed without government approval. Lorenzo's solution was to make every possible effort to reduce costs. He moved to cut wages. The unions went on strike. Lorenzo declared bankruptcy and abrogated all the union contracts. He explained the strategy in this 1988 NewsHour interview. We were small, a small company. We did not have markets. We did not have any market share. We certainly didn't have any profitability. And we really were trying to give the consumer some real value. And uh, that's what it was all about. To some, Lorenzo was Continental's savior. To industry analysts, he was a visionary, a man creating the model for airline operations in the post-deregulation era. To the unions, he was a demon. Carla Winkler was a union flight attendant back then. When you went to work for Frank Lorenzo, um, there was no compassion. The employees, they were a commodity, like a file cabinet, like a desk or a chair. They just moved the pieces around, and, and you weren't to have any feelings, or, or they didn't care if you liked the job. Most people that know me would hardly think I'm cold, and um, my record has shown we look for a lot more than the bottom line. Eventually, Lorenzo built what was briefly the largest airline company in the free world. He merged New York Air, People Express, Frontier, and Texas International into Continental and acquired bankrupt Eastern Airlines. But the relentless pursuit of ever lower labor costs proved disastrous. Continental plummeted to the bottom of everyone's list. The worst airline for lost baggage, late departures, and most customer complaints. The product was cheap but so bad that nobody wanted to buy it. Lorenzo left Continental just months before the company declared a second bankruptcy in 1990. When Bethune was hired in 1994, a third bankruptcy was imminent. It was the most difficult place I've ever come in my life. What made it difficult? Well, I think it's the value system that was in place, the overt kind of focus on lowest cost is the way to win, when it certainly hadn't won in 10 years. Obviously, it had the makings of a good company, but it was what you'd have to characterize as dysfunctional. Tough day. <laughs> Bethune hired 33-year-old Greg Brenneman as chief operating officer. Brenneman says it was pretty obvious to both men what had destroyed Continental. People were focused on bidding the pilots against the mechanics and the gate agents against the flight attendants to see if you could beat down in labor costs by getting them fighting with one another. And, of course, this is the biggest team sport in the world. You have to get everybody working together. Bethune and Brenneman tried several strategies to try to get people to work together. For example, Continental was spending about $6 million a month rebooking passengers on other airlines because their flights had arrived too late to make connections. Hey, uh, 31's been holding, waiting for a flight crew, a late inbound flight crew. Copy, Brian. In January of 1995, Bethune decided he would pay each employee $65 every time Continental placed among the top five airlines in the Transportation Department's monthly on-time performance rating. A month later, Continental had moved from last place to fourth. The following month, it ranked first. And the cost of the bonuses was more than offset by the reduction in payments to other airlines. Sixty-five bucks was a nice way of saying thank you to a bunch of people who learned that the only way to get the 65 bucks is when they all work together. And it's been working for us ever since. It's not a lot, but it doesn't sometimes take a lot to show that this is like an appreciative change in the way we behave. Come on out. Continental also started holding drawings to give vehicles to people who had perfect attendance for the previous six months. 
And for the past two years, employees have gotten a profit-sharing check and a party to celebrate the company's reversal of fortune. Last year, Continental reported record profits of $640 million. The high-paying business travelers have come back. The airline is winning awards for customer service, including two consecutive J.D. Power awards. Okay, again, thank you very much. Have a good day. And Continental is now consistently among the top three airlines on the Department of Transportation's rankings for on-time performance and customer satisfaction. Judy Menzinger has worked for Continental for 11 years. She's now the Director of Customer Relations. The realization is finally that you don't have a positive bottom line unless you have happy employees who do enjoy coming to work and who will take good care of our customers. Now Continental is embarking on a new business strategy that many analysts believe will be the model for airline operations in the 21st century. The airline is entering into a partnership with Minneapolis-based Northwest Airlines. The companies will code share. That is, a passenger would buy a ticket from Continental, but part of the route might actually be flown by Northwest. Code sharing allows airlines to offer service to more destinations by connecting passengers to their partner airline, theoretically attracting more business for both. Bethune believes the alliance will avoid the serious problems that have arisen in the past when airlines have merged in order to create larger route structures. But some observers are skeptical. Airline analyst Paul Stephen Dempsey says the alliance with Northwest could bring about some of the same kinds of problems that arose when Lorenzo merged all those airlines back in the 80s. And the difficulty that you have is two corporate cultures, one of which Continental is a very high service carrier, the other, Northwest, is uh, deteriorated in terms of service levels in recent years. Trying to put those companies together and integrate their operations is very difficult without a command structure model. Um, this is going to be a cooperative model. They're going to ask each company to come together and try to cooperate. It's very difficult to do. But Brenneman argues the new alliance will be good for everyone. I think it is a new paradigm in that we've figured out a way to, to get the scale of putting a couple of big companies together in an, in an a way that's beneficial to consumers because you can use your frequent flyer miles in more places and earn them more places and you just have more options as a customer. Dempsey agrees code sharing probably is the wave of the future, but he says it won't be good for customers. For the life of me, I can't understand why the Department of Transportation is so enthused with this notion uh, that airlines should not compete, uh, that they should cooperate. Um, I, I don't think that that's in the best long-term interest of the consumer. But nonetheless, this is the track we're on. This is the way the game is being played. And yes, we will have these massive alliances spread with, its tentacle, with their tentacles reaching around the globe. The pilots, again unionized, also have some doubts. I think that's what a lot of people don't understand, is that this is our careers. Continental's pilots staged informational picketing at various airports to draw public attention to their concerns about the alliance. They're suspicious it would jeopardize their job security and that a true merger is really in the works. Bethune adamantly denies that. Union President Captain Len Nikolai says pilots are worried that Northwest would get most of the new routes, leaving Continental pilots with fewer job opportunities. If they really want this pilot group, this employee group, to buy off onto this transaction, they need to provide us with the information we need to make decisions about our careers. And if they won't share that information with us, that raises doubts, that raises suspicions, and they have nobody to blame but themselves. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Gordon Bethune, where are you headed? But Bethune was apparently okay. successful in okay. allaying those suspicions. The pilots reached a tentative agreement on a new contract on February 24th, but a final agreement isn't expected until the end of April. For all of the good news, Bethune says the airline isn't entirely out of the woods yet. He acknowledges the company needs to lower its debt levels and reduce interest payments on loans and aircraft leases. Meanwhile, the entire airline industry is racking up record profits thanks to the booming economy. Bethune says he isn't worried about an economic downturn pushing Continental to the edge of insolvency, as has happened many times over the past 20 years. This once nearly deadbeat airline now has a billion dollars in the bank. Welcome to Business Unusual. I'm Beverly Shook. Travelers booked on Pan Am got an unpleasant surprise last month. The company's two main subsidiaries filed for bankruptcy, grounding the airline. But another airline with a history of financial trouble, Continental Airlines, is flying high. 
Near bankruptcy in 1995, Continental posted record profits last year. Piloting Continental's turnaround, two men who are overhauling the airline's corporate culture and redefining its definition of success. Now Continental is teaming up with Northwest Airlines, giving it the muscle to compete with the industry's biggest carriers. Donald Vandermark has the story of Continental's comeback. Continental Airlines is taking off. The airline that hovered on the brink of financial collapse for more than a decade is back on course. Averting disaster, Chairman and CEO Gordon Bethune and President and Chief Operating Officer Greg Brenneman together broke new ground, tackling first the number one problem, employee relations. Hourly companies look like, maybe like telephones, you know, you, and then you pick it up and there's no dial tone. You said, holy smokes, it's, you know, dysfunctional. And so you come into Continental and you find out there's really nice people here, but they're all at odds with each other because of the way the company had been managed. And so the company was absolutely dysfunctional. Bethune took over in early 1995. Over the previous 10 years, Continental had seen 10 presidents, ranked consistently last in on-time performance, baggage handling, and customer complaints and filed for Chapter 11 twice, with another trip to the bankruptcy court imminent. What happened to Continental initially was there would be a bunch of bankers and lawyers sitting on the 20th floor of an office building, and every time something went wrong with the company, they'd write a rule that would say, thou shalt not. And pretty soon there was a rule book that was about this thick with thou shalt nots. And nobody could follow it, but everybody would get in trouble whenever they violated one of these thou shalt nots. So everybody just took the attitude of we're not going to try and do anything. We're just going to duck our head in the sand and wait for the next president to come down here and tell us what to do. And uh, first thing we did when we got here is took a big trash can, took that rule book, threw it in the trash can, poured gasoline on the rule book, and lit it. By hiring Brenneman, a 33-year-old consultant, Bethune began to change the corporate culture. Brenneman was young, efficient, no nonsense. Keep it up, okay? I spent most of my life before coming here riding in the middle seat of row. 15 on uh, an American Airlines airplane, and so I know exactly what you need to do in order to have a comfortable seat. Together, they revamped Continental's operations, dumping on profitable routes, improving service, and winning back lucrative business travelers. But first, they needed to rally Continental's frustrated workforce. They did that with bonuses, cold, hard cash. When you start back in January 95, when we said, hey, we're spending $6 million a month being late. Let's give three million of it to employees just to get in the top half of the ranking that the Department of Transportation does for on time. Well, this first month we did it, we came in fourth place. The second month Continental came in first for the first time in 60 years. Today, employees get $65 a month if the airline finishes among the top three of the federal rankings and $100 if it finishes first. A lot of it just comes down to personal chemistry. Uh, Continental's new management team decided to change the corporate culture, which before did not give much emphasis at all on employee morale. And they've kept that emphasis since then. It's profit sharing day at Continental Airlines. To increase the excitement, Bethune hired an armored car transporting bogus bags of cash. How you doing, Bob? You guys waiting for the money? In addition to the 21 million real dollars paid out in on-time performance bonuses in 1997, 40,000 employees will divvy up a record 105 million dollars, celebrating Continental's most profitable year ever. Bethune believes it's money well spent. We we'll change what we call success. No longer were we interested in being the cheapest, and success wasn't producing the cheapest product. Success was producing a product that had good value amongst people who enjoyed working there. So we said, customers want to be on time, clean, safe, and reliable. That's what they want before the price. And so we said, let's be on time and measure ourselves the way customers measure. You brought your money. Continental boasted sales of more than $6.6 .6 billion in 97. Profits came in at $385 million. The company recorded its best annual load factor ever, more than 70%. Running an airline is no different than putting some good systems in place and a good strategy of flying where people want to go and then getting out of, what, out of the way and letting the inmates run the asylum. And uh, that's really what we did, is we just liberated the people of Continental to do what they always knew how to do. Topping it off, Continental's latest endeavor, the Mega Alliance with Northwest Airlines. 
After long rumor talks about a takeover by Delta Airlines, Bethune's team opted for the Minnesota-based carrier. We believe that two and two can make five working in concert. Now, what you see is unusual is that shareholder value is created without the expense of wages lost and cities losing air service and all the bad things that happen with mergers. So I believe it's a new way of doing business, and over the next few years, you're going to see us prove that. Three years after implementation, the alliance is expected to generate an additional $500 million a year in combined revenues by capturing more passengers, travelers that would otherwise have switched airlines during connections. Continental and Northwest supplement each other nicely. There's very little overlap between these two airlines, uh, so they're not going to be increasing their local dominance, uh, but they will be able to uh, provide a lot more connect opportunities for passengers throughout the country and with their global alliance throughout the world. That kind of competitiveness is inspiring. And now we're on the top of the world, and people love working for a winner, so it's fun to be a part of that. For Gordon Bethune, a pilot himself, operating Continental is not all that different from operating a 757. You cannot BS your way to find the airplane. If you really don't know how to do it, you're gonna bust your tail. Same way with, if you really don't know how to fix something, it just stays broken until somebody shows up that knows it. For Business Unusual, I'm Donald Vandemar. Recently, Continental and its pilots union announced a tentative agreement on a new five-year contract, and Continental expects regulatory approval of its alliance with Northwest in June.